Where are we? We're in Phoenix. Has anyone been outside? It's friggin' hot out there, man. All right. Oh, it's not that. It's cooling down. Oh, that's good to know. It's not that hot. Excellent. Good, good, good. All right. You all know where you are. And for those of you that don't, good luck. Um, I'm out here to start. We're running a few minutes behind them. We're still waiting on a couple folks, but I figured I'd get you going and get started and teach you guys how to yell and scream to fill those empty seats in the back. There's a few left. But uh, the intro that I always give, if you've ever seen a video, you know what's coming. I don't see too many little faces, but if there are children in here, it is PG-13 to rated R, more towards the R. So if you stay in the room despite that little bit, it's your fault. <laughs> so no complaining to the management afterwards. That happened once. That's why I always do this intro. So how is everybody? All right, that was your cue to be loud. People over there are sleeping. All right, we're going to see who's louder right now. That's what we're going to do to get ready because there's a few of them back there listening to see how loud we could be. So from this side of the room, this way, you're going to scream on the count of three. Okay, ready? And you got to do good because otherwise they're going to kick your ass. One, two, three. Not bad. Not bad at all. Can you do it? On three, this side over. One, two, three. What do you guys think? They beat you, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Come on, admit it. When you lose, admit it. There's Cardinals fans in here, right? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was rooting for the Cardinals, too. It's a shame. All right. So here we go. I'm going to bring up the folks that are here, and we'll get started. But I want to hear both of those collectively for each guy that comes up because they like to hear that. All right? It makes them feel good about themselves. <laughs> oh, and afterwards, when we're done, I was told the con, I believe, closes or the signing floor closes at 7, but they'll be signing autographs. And if you get over there... You can stay in line even when they shut the lights off and sign autographs and get all that done. So just letting you know. All right. First up, I can see him right here. Give me a big thumbs up. Let's see. You've known him as the brain. Yes. He is half the cast of Futurama. Mr. Big from Zootopia. Maurice LaMarche, folks. Hey. Yes, right there. All right. Thank you. Next up, let's see. Resident Evil, Albert Wesker's here, folks. Legion from Mass Effect, DC Douglas. <laughs> Next up, we have an Animaniac. Wacko's here. He's also a couple Transformers. You love him, Jess Harnell. I got him right here. He's going to check the whole place. I got you right there. All right, I don't, I don't see him. They're back there, right? All right. How about we bring it? I think you've, you've all probably all played a game called Uncharted, right? Nathan Drake is here, guys. Nolan North. <laughs> Last but not least, you know his laugh very well. The Joker from Arkham Knights. Joel from The Last of Us. Troy Baker. That was a great intro, guys. Good job. I always say this before I do anything on stage. Phoenix Comic Con, are you ready to rock? Yeah! That is what I'm talking about right there. All right. What? Can't, I'm sorry. Can somebody turn up the sound? I can't hear Yeah, because we're going to say some amazing shit. You want to hear does, this. Does my work work? Hey, everyone? 
Get every, er, in the act. <laughs> I don't know how to read. All right, if you keep saying shit out there, I can't control what's going on up here, so knock it off. It's like hurting cats. All right, let's start. Oh, and by the, I didn't even mention, you guys know what movie we're doing, right? That didn't sound reassuring. We're doing the Ghostbusters. All right, scene one. Oh, God. By the time we're done, you're going to scream for an all-female Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, boy. All right. As Peter Venkman, Jess, Wacko Warner. Ah, yes. There you go, man. And I, actually, we have an original real Ghostbuster from the cartoon here. Maurice was Egon. Yep. Spangler what? was an original. Yes, yeah, so as Spangler, Maurice... Thank you. You want me to read it as Egon? I'd like you to. Okay, all right. Nice. Well, let's, let's take the cartoon Egon and put him in the movie. It's all, right. all making that. sense. We're going to do that. And uh, narrated DC. I heard you do a mean Don Pardo. I don't know about that. <laughs> You're going to narrate. As the librarian, uh, Troy. I... <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried. Okay. Nice. As Stance. Nolan, oh, God. Uh, I want to hear your Jason Statham impression. <laughs> yes. And uh, Mo, the, the, there's a ghost in this scene who makes a weird noise. We just make a noise. You can do that. No, no. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I think I might. Have when you hear a noise, that's that's the ghost. All right, guys, whenever you're ready. All right, dude. Oh. <clears throat> Ghostbusters, brought to you by Twisted Tunes, hosted by Jeff Zanini, based on Ghostbusters, written by Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Story begins in library. Older woman, Ray Finkel's mom from Ace Ventura, is in the basement and books float, etc. She gets chased, eventually getting confronted with a vapor or a ghost for you laymen's. Venkman, played by Bill Murray, or in this case, Maurice LaMarche. No, do I have that right? Then uh, never mind. I... Somebody famous than I, more famous than I, is hitting on a co-ed student who was played by the same girl who went on to become Cindy Brady in the 1988 movie. A very Brady Christmas. That's pretty good. Interior New York City Public Library. Egon Spengler is looking for spirits when Venkman and Stance arrive. Hello, Phoenix Comic Con. <laughs> and hello to you too, Egon. Oh, good, you're here. Yeah, and, and what have you got there, Egon? Oh, can I call you Dadu? No, you can call me Egon. And this is big, Peter. This is very, very big. There's definitely something here. Egon, somehow this reminds me of the time you tried to drill a hole in your head. Do you remember that? That would have worked if you hadn't stopped me. <laughs> Hello! I'm Roger Delacorte, <laughs> the head librarian. <laughs> Are you the men from the university? <laughs> yes, and I loved you in Aladdin. I'm Dr. Venkman, and this is Dr. Stance. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'd appreciate it if we could take care of this quickly and ironically, quietly. <laughs> Whoa, 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 one thing at a time. We don't even know what you have yet, but it's probably chlamydia. <laughs> Venkman is questioning the librarian who saw the spirit. I don't remember seeing any legs, but it definitely had arms because it reached for me. Yeah, arms, great. Stop laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> I can't wait to get a look at this thing. All right, miss. Have you or any member of your family ever been diagnosed schizophrenic or mentally incompetent? None of your business. <laughs> but my uncle thought he was St. Jerome. Well, I'll call that a big yes. And do you yourself habitually use drugs, stimulants, or alcohol? I don't mean you, because I know you do. Go on. No. 
Oh, I thought not. And one last thing. Are you currently having a potty emergency? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? And also, yes. <laughs> whoa, whoa, back off, man. I'm a scientist who doesn't wear pants. Peter, it's moving. An ethereal presence is hovering between the stacks of books about four feet off the ground. It's an elderly female librarian. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's a woman. No, it's a woman, you puff. Talking about... I told you it's real. Well, what do we do now? I don't know. Maybe we talk to it. Well, what do I say? <laughs> Anything. Just make contact, right? Hello, nurse! <laughs> Lady, can you talk? Who are you? Oh, this isn't working. I've got to think of something else. Okay, okay, I got it. I'm gonna run up, do a flip off that desk, <laughs> spin kick it in the face. <laughs> I used to be an Olympic diver. I have a plan, all right? He starts moving closer to the apparition. Venkman and Spengler edge closer, fighting their fear. Now do exactly as I say. Everybody ready? Is everybody ready? Good. Okay. Well, get her! I do not scream and run away. <laughs> Did you see it? What was it? We'll get back to you. I'm okay with ghosts, but I'm terribly afraid of clowns. And scene. Boom. <laughs> and they're off. Holy crap. God. One thing that was killing me is one of your lines said Soto voice, and it <laughs> didn't need that stage direction. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me in. What do you think? Was that fun? <laughs> Holy crap. That should be the remake right there, dude. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, moving on. Next scene. As stance. Maurice, let's switch to the brain. Nice. As Spangler, Jess, how about Roger Rabbit? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to narrate it. Nolan, let's just keep doing impressions. How about John Cleese? Narration. As uh, Dean Yeager, Troy, Patrick Warburton. <laughs> and as Venkman, I think it's time to hear from Mr. Wesker. Whenever you guys are ready. Cool, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Patty, if you're watching this, this is all in love. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Venkman, Stance, and Spengler head for their love in Weaver Hall. <laughs> Spengler makes rapid calculations as Venkman and Stance argue. Get her. That was your whole plan. You call that science? <laughs> I guess I got a little overexcited by then. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it incredible, though? I'm, I'm telling you, this is a first. You know what this could mean to the university? Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. This could be bigger than the microchip. They'll probably throw out the entire engineering department and turn their building over to us. We are probably the first serious scientist to ever molest a dear old lady! How about Jeepers, fellas? I wouldn't say the experience was completely wasted. Based on time and readings, I think we have an excellent chance of actually catching a ghost and holding it indefinitely like my lovely wife, Jessica. Dude, I kick ass, I told you. Then we were right. This is great. And if the ionization rate is constant for all ectoplasmic entities, I think we could really kick ass <laughs> in the spiritual sense of course spengler are you serious about actually catching a ghost i'm always serious <laughs> <sighs> oh wow 
Egon, I take back everything I've ever said about you. You completely saturate me. <laughs> Interior of the lab day. As they're walking, <laughs> janitorial and maintenance personnel are busy uh, dismantling their apparatus and equipment. Dean Yeager is appreciating and supervising. I trust you're moving us to a better space somewhere on campus. <laughs> no! We're moving you off campus. <laughs> the Board of Regents had decided to terminate your grant. You had to vacate these premises immediately. <laughs> this is preposterous. I demand an explanation. Fine. This university will no longer continue any funding of any kind for your group's activities. But why? The students love us. I've made love to each and every one of them. <laughs> Dr. Bankman, we believe that the purpose of science is to serve mankind. You, however, seem to regard science as some kind of dodge or a hustle. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy. Your conclusions are highly questionable. You're a poor scientist, Dr. Bankman. You have no place in this department or in this university! <laughs> I see. <laughs> Exterior Columbia University day a little later. Stance and Venkman are sitting on a bench, both looking desolate. <laughs> this is a major disgrace. Forget MIT or Stanford now, they wouldn't touch us with a 10-meter cattle prod. Mm, always so worried about your reputation. We don't need the university. We have Ouroboros. <laughs> Einstein did his best stuff while he was working as a patent clerk. You know what a patent clerk makes. I liked the university. They gave us money, they gave us facilities, and we didn't have to produce anything. <laughs> I've worked in the private sector. They expect results. You've never been out of college. You don't know what it's like out there. Let me tell you, Ray. Everything in life happens for a reason. Call it fate. Call it luck, karma, whatever. I think we are destined to get kicked out of there. Yeah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just hanging around in the back. <laughs> to go into business for ourselves. Oh, I don't know, that costs money, Peter. And the ecto-containment system <laughs> we have in mind will require a load of bread to capitalize. Where would we get the money? Exterior Avenue of the America's Day, Venkman Stance and Spengler emerge from the Irving Trust Bank. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never regret this, Ray, not that I care. My parents left me that house. I was born there. You're not going to lose the house. Everybody has three mortgages these days. But at 19% interest? It was the 90s, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even bargain with the guy. Just for your information, Ray, the interest payments alone for the first five years come to over $95,000. That's a lot of moolah. Enough! Will you guys relax? We are on the threshold of establishing the indispensable defense science of the next decade. Professional paranormal investigations and eliminations. The franchise rights alone will make us wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. And see. Boom! Are we having fun so far? Uh, 
By the way, the funny thing is, that's how Nolan always walks. I'm serious. I've hung out with him a lot. That's how he walks all the time. No, it's a rash. Yeah. <laughs> it all won't right. go away. It won't Before go away. we do the next scene, if you want to hear more Wesker. Oh, if yeah. Uh, for those of you who are over 18, tonight at 7:30 North 221 is an erotic fan fiction. Oh, you're actually going to sign that? Erotic. <laughs> erotic. <laughs> She's got it, yeah. But. <laughs> boobs. Oh, I, I can't stop myself. Anyway, tonight, 7.30, North 221, come. All right, selfless promotion over. Okay, next scene. All right. Uh, in the next scene, as Janine, Maurice, William Shatner. Oh, good. Hey, for those of you guys who don't know in real life, he's my neighbor and he thinks I'm Gene Simmons. I'm not even making that up. Isn't that the most awesome That's thing true. ever? For like 17 years. It's great. Yeah. As uh, Dana, Troy, how about Jeff Goldblum? Nice. As the narrator, Mass Effect fans, how about Legion? Okay. All right. As Stance, Maurice, Peter Falk. The narrator of The Princess Bride or Columbo? Okay, now you know who he is. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, as Spangler, Jess, Bill Cosby. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, wow. And as, as Vankman Nolan, how about Deadpool? That's messed up. Whenever you guys are ready. Oh, God. I'm really sorry in advance. <laughs> God. If you wake up after an indeterminate amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody drink anything for the next 15 minutes. How about that? Shall we? Who's the narrator? <clears throat> the narrator is DC. They buy a deserted fire station that should be condemned and somehow converted to a facility that houses supernatural beings in a technologically advanced containment system. You're also introduced to Lewis Commander and Dana Commander, who live in the apartment building that is going to be haunted. Dana's TV is on. Ghostbusters commercial playing. Oh, whatever. Excuse me, sir, uh, but are you troubled by strange noises in the night? <laughs> Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Because if you don't, I have some pills that could make you. <laughs> We're all going to hell for this bit. And he's going to be there with us. He's got very strong hands. Have you or your family actually seen a spook specter or ghost? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Just pick up the phone and call the professionals. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters man, yes. Our courteous and efficient staff is on call 24 hours a day to serve all your supernatural elimination needs. We're, We're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you. Even though I would not believe me. <laughs> Interior, Garage Bay, Day. Stance Commander hits the siren and flashes the emergency lights as he drives in. Everybody can relax. I found the car. How do you like it? Do you think it's wide enough? <laughs> if I had a nickel. How much? 4800 Just needs a little suspension work and a muffler. I don't know, maybe brakes. Reception area, Day. A bored-looking, red-headed young woman with a defin definitive Queen's accent sits... Attache sits at the reception desk, putting another coat of red polish on her heavily lacquered nails. You are yeah. very handy. <laughs> I can tell. I bet you like to read a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> Print is dead like my career. <laughs> it's not my fault, dude. 
Oh. <laughs> That's very fascinating to me. I read a lot myself. Some people think I'm too intellectual. <laughs> but I think reading is a fabulous way to spend your spare time. I also play racquetball. Do you have a hobby? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop right there. Okay. I collect. <laughs> Man, I collect spores and molds and fungus and pudding. <laughs> Dana Barra Commander enters and looks around hesitantly. I've lost where we are, and I'm doing Cosby now. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hello, I'm Peter Venkman. No, I'm Peter Venkman. I'm Peter Venkman. I'm Peter Venkman. Shut up. May I help you? Uh, 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 uh well, yes. Uh, 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 I, well, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, what, I, <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I have to say, uh, with, uh, with using words out of my mouth, because I take the words and the air comes through the lungs and it comes out of my mouth, is, uh, is, is it, it, may, it, may, it may sound a, a little, a little uh, <laughs> unusual. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, this is, this certainly doesn't apply, this line. It's going to be great. Let's go for it. We're all professionals here, miss. Uh, miss. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, oh, me. That's my, uh, you, uh, mister is, is something for, 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 for a man. Uh, and miss is, is, a, uh, uh, <laughs> is for a woman. Uh, my, my, my name is Barrett, uh, uh, Dana, Dana Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> You're very tall, Dana. <laughs> Why don't you step into the office and we'll talk about it. Interior office. Dana Commander is hooked up to a lie detector looking for her soul. <laughs> Spengler is monitoring the readout and videotaping the interview. Oh, well, I, I, I was here to uh, walk you through exactly what happened. Uh, I, 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 I opened the refrigerator. Uh, the fr refrigerator doors where you put things, I mean, cold things in one side, and you have the hot stuff on the other side, and it's on the refrigerator. Something else. And then and there was a, a fire, a fire, and this thing <laughs> it said Zul, yes, Zul, which of course is, is probably, probably a Babylonian word. I don't like to judge people by, 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 by their uh, region. Uh, uh, but, and and then, then I opened the door again, uh, 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 <laughs> but it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was gone. <laughs> Uh, there, was, uh, there was nothing there. What? Could you repeat that? <laughs> <clears throat> so, so what, do you, what do you think it was? I, 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 I don't want to put in a professional. Uh, I, I think, I think uh, uh, something uh, in, 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 in my refrigerator is, is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 trying, is trying to get me. <laughs> Well, generally, you don't see that kind of behavior in major appliances. Why don't you take off your top? What do you think, Egon? Man, she's telling the truth, or at least she thinks she is, and that's the same thing I said to my lawyer. Oh, no, 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 The question, uh, from an existential standpoint, why would any, anyone make up a thing, uh, 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 anything like that? Like well, that? you know, some people just like the attention, and some people are just crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't know. You know, Peter, this could be a past life experience intruding on the present. Yes, or even a race memory man stored in the collective unconscious, you see. And I wouldn't rule out clairvoyance or telepathic contact either, or maybe a big bowl of jello pudding. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, you, 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 see, you see, sometimes I put the pudding uh, in, in, in my pants, sometimes it gives me a uh, cool, cool, cool sensation around my uh, uh, parts. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, but but uh, it, it says here on the, the page, trying trying to be serious in a pantheticle. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just that I, I, I don't believe in any of uh, uh, any, 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 any of those things. I don't either. <laughs> Why don't I go check out the building? It may have a history of psychic turbulence. Oh, that's a good idea. Why don't you go do that? 
Man, I could look for the name Zool in the usual literature in my black book, which is empty now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I tell you what, I'll, I'll take Miss Barrett back to her apartment, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> and I'll check oh. her out, <laughs> and in and up and over. I'll go check out Miss Barrett's apartment, okay? Uh, it sounds like you, you, euphemism, a euphemism for. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and scene. <laughs> and scene. Uh, oh my God. Uh, you guys. So I don't even know what this is. This say. is what it's like when we go to work. How awesome yeah. is that, right? This is what it's like when we're in traffic, except there's only <laughs> one person in the car, but all of this is still happening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're just going to move on. What do you got right. uh, And avoid a lawsuit. Yeah, let, let's just keep going forward. Okay. Um, coming up, let's see. Let's have it narrated. We have, we have Blaze Blue fans out there. Uh, DC, Azriel, how about the narrator? Oh, boy. Okay. And as Peter, Maurice, Pepe Le Pew. And you've waited long enough as Dana, Nolan, Nathan Drake. Yes. It's just my voice. Nobody wants to hear that shit. They're dying to hear you. Pick something else. It's just this. Hi, how are you? Hey. All right, all right. We'll do Nathan Drake. All right. That's great. That's, that's great. That's going to be fun for me. <laughs> I hope uh, you'll enjoy yourself. When, whenever you're ready, guys. Uh, apologies to the sound crew. This is only one line, as Azrael from Blaze Blue. Dang on Peter enter her apartment! Peter is using his tool! <laughs> awesome. Ah, uh, my darling. Uh, allow me. If something is going to happen here, I want it to happen to me first, huh? Hmm? <laughs> Oh, hmm, a lot of space. Just you? Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> hey, uh, so what is that thing you're doing? Mm, it is technical. It is one of our little toys, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my little toys, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, uh, that's the bedroom, but th nothing ever happened in there because I'm never home. Mm, what a crime. Uh... You know, you really don't act like a scientist. <laughs> they are usually pretty stiff. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're more like, uh, you know, a, a, a game show host. Ah, merci. Uh, now, that is the kitchen, eh? Dana, are these the eggs? Uh, yeah, yeah, see, I was over there, and then the eggs just kind of jumped right out of their shells and started to cook right on the counter. That is weird. <laughs> you could say that, yeah. And, and, and that's when I started to hear this you know, bunch of crap coming out of the refrigerator. <laughs> hey, uh, Dr. Menkeman, you've come all this way. Would, you want to examine the, the fridge? Mm, I should check the fridge. Good call, yes. Oh, mon dieu, look at all this junk food. <laughs> no, god damn it. Sully, I'll handle this. <laughs> look, this wasn't here. Do you actually eat this stuff? Look, this wasn't here. There was nothing here. There was a, a, like a space. There's a building or something with flames coming out of it. it I may have had something to do with it, but I can't. I destroy a lot of lost cities and things, <laughs> but I've never screwed around with a fridge. And well, there were creatures riding around, they were growling and snarling, and there were flames, and uh, yeah, I'm used to it, but I've never heard this. It said the word Zool, okay? And it was right here. Uh, all right, hang on. We, uh, we've got a special treat for you guys. We, oh yeah, we have someone who's gonna come up and read. <laughs> You all know Sean Astin, right? Uh, 
All right, we're, we're going to cut Sean. Sean, we're on page 12. Guys, how cool? No, we don't. See what happens? You never know what's going to happen on these panels. Yeah. All right, page 12 from the, the black dotted line up there up top. We're going we're gonna to bring Sean in, uh, and he's going to play the part of Dana as, how about Doug from 50 First Dates? Nice, nice. I think that's appropriate for this scene. All right, and as, as Peter, Jess, how about Christopher Walken? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Sean, you gotta give me a lot of time on this, dude. This takes a lot, you'll see. So All right, it, whenever you guys are ready. Wow, guys, <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, I'm just not getting any reaction. <laughs> Wait, you threw your, uh... Doing that thing correctly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so, but I'm sure there were no animals in there, but I think there was a watch. It's your father's watch. <laughs> it's been up my ass for 25 years. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> <clears throat> Either the monster in my kitten or I'm completely crazy. Hey, wow, stop. I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> Makes me feel so much better. Dana, let me tell you something about myself. <laughs> I come home from work to my place, and all I have is my work. There's nothing else in my life. Dr. Bankman. I mean you when I say, wow, hey, there's some guy with the same problem I have. Baby, I got a fever. And the only cure is more cowbell. <laughs> I really need a cowbell to go with this. Nice ding, ding, ding. <clears throat> yes, well, we both have the same problem, you. I'm gonna go for broke. At one time, were you involved in a search for a ring? <laughs> Because Sean, and this next part is true, I'm madly in love with you. <clears throat> we got rid of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, uh, look, I don't believe this. All right, will you, will you please just leave? And then she threw me out of life. She thought I was a creep. She said, hey, you're a geek. And she probably wasn't the first. Odd. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. But you know, I've got. No. No, it. no, no, no. Dad, Mongoose got out of traffic again. Rudy, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll prove myself to you. How do I do Rudy? Do I switch to Rudy for a second? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go inside, outside, inside, and outside. You're gonna get one of the run, boys. Once you get one of the run, you're gonna get one of the run, and you go. Go get out of here, Dr. Frankman! <laughs> and so. Yeah, I'll solve your little problem and I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. And then you'll say, hey, Pete hey. Venkman's a guy who can get things done. No, I won't. I wonder what makes him tick. <laughs> uh, tick, what makes me tick? What does make me tick? I wonder if he'd be interested in knowing what makes me tick. Oh. <laughs> no. Right. You know, Sean, I bet you're going to be thinking about me and the watch after I'm gone. Yes, I bet I am. Wait a minute. <laughs> no kiss? And scene. Wow. Wow. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's really strange. It's like you're just, I feel like I'm hallucinating. <laughs> Do you, is that what you guys, is that why you like this? It's like you're hallucinating the whole time? Yeah. No, they're so high they always feel like this. 
All right, hey, Sean, can you yeah. stick around for one more? Yeah. All, yes. right. All right, we're going to keep it for one more. All right. All right, next scene. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Spangler, Troy. How about Matthew McConaughey? Nice. Nice. All right. As the guest, Maurice, how about Morbo? Nice. As the manager, Jess Ironhide. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Jess, All right. one more time. Uh, we're going to have, Sean, we're going to have you play the part of Stance, and this is going to be an audience. You're going to tell us who he's playing. Oh, God. Your choices are Sam from Lord, don't say anything yet, Sam from Lord of the Rings or Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Shut up! Not yet! Yeah, Shut dude. up! Dude. If you want... Sam, scream. I think it's pretty cool. All right, if you want Raphael, scream. They oh. like you in green, man. Overwhelming, we're going to hear Raphael <laughs> as Stance. I as, could also do Raphael. As. <laughs> <laughs> I did the movie. Dueling Raffies? You want dueling Raphaels? So be it. I only right. did it once. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Look what you did. Do this. Look what you did. <laughs> this is on you. This is Sean Aston. Sean Aston. <laughs> and we need we, Rob. If Rob was here, we could all three sort of, sort of take a little Yeah. Dance or something. Oh, you've done it more longer than I have, so it's all on you. I'll just sit here. This was an Oprah episode. You get a Raphael. <laughs> you get a Raphael. <laughs> you get a Raphael. All right, well. I had you in as the penguin, but if you'd rather do Raphael, Peng penguin is penguin is Venkman. Peter Venkman is now the penguin. Uh, you are Stance, and then we have let's see, we have the narrator, DC. How about Chase from? Uh, we have two Transformer rescue bots here. You want to do Chase, yeah. rescue bot? I'm Maurice, you were a rescue bot too. Well, I'm actually a human on the rescue bots. Inside me. Janine, Janine has one line. Janine, Janine as Chief Burns. Janine as bot. Chief Burns from the rescue bot. Oh. So now we are all have we all have a line. All right, whenever you guys are ready, we can run. I forget how to do the voice. All right. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, interior Ghostbusters office night. The phone rings. Janine answers it. Ghostbusters. Yes, it is. Yes, of course they're serious. You do? You have? Oh, yes, sir, yes. Well, they're out on another case right now, but if you'll give me the address, don't worry, they'll be totally discreet. <laughs> we got one! <laughs> Interior hotel lobby night. The Ghostbusters car pulls up with engines wailing. They all jump out and enter the hotel wearing jumpsuits with proton packs strapped to their backs. Thank you for coming so quickly. The guests are starting to ask questions and I'm running out of excuses. We must find the cube and save Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Come on, has this ever happened before? Well, most of the original staff knows about the 12th floor. The disturbances, I mean. But it's been quiet for years, up until two weeks ago. It was never ever this bad, though. Well, did you ever report it to anyone? Yes, I reported it to Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Sorry, dude, don't make me laugh. This is serious shit. Iron... <laughs> Ironhide, don't <laughs> move a muscle. I don't... I don't like us to even talk about it. I had hoped we could take care of this quietly tonight, like Bill Cosby. It's not my fault, dude. Master Splinter. <laughs> we really don't know how to deal with that problem. Yes, sir. Don't worry. We'll handle this kind of thing. We handle this kind of thing all the time. A guest accosts him while they wait for a box that lifts them floor by floor. I believe you call it an elevator. What are you supposed to be? Cosmonauts? Me? We're, uh, we're the exterminators. Somebody saw a cockroach on the 12th floor. 
That's got to be some cockroach. Yeah, <laughs> it'll bite your head off. <laughs> Cockroaches give Morbo gas. They get on the elevator, the very stinky box with wires, and arrive on the 12th floor. The, the crane. Non sequitur. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just realized something. We never had a completely sex a successful test with any of the equipment. Yeah, it's equipment, man. It's supposed to be a cool thing you want to do over there. It's got that. It's exciting. So that's what's cool. Everybody's got to be talking about that stuff. I tell you right now, though, I tell you right now, here, now, okay, I blame myself. You have very short arms. <laughs> but so do I. <laughs> There's no sense worrying about it now. <laughs> sure. Each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on our back. No problem. Oh, come on. Switch me on. I already did. Mikey, switch it's me started. on. Oh, they, sure. I knew that was coming. They split up and walk around. Ray sees one. The vapor is hunched over a room service cart. It hangs there, translucent, foul, green, feeding off table scraps and leftover beverages. It looks like a misshapen potato with a pushed in face and splendidly arms. I believe you call it a Donald Trump. <laughs> that was good. Wow. I think a I think a misshapen potato is a potato. <laughs> uh, boil em, mash em. Uh, Egon. I think oh wait, uh right? Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Egon! I got something. I'm moving in. Oh, that sounds all right with me, man. <laughs> That's cool, that's cool. Everybody's cool. We move in, whatever I'm gonna do. That's right, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Sorry, someone had to take me off the pot. <laughs> hey, Ray, Ray, man, how are you doing? Where are you at, man? Are you all right, all right, all right, all right? God, Mikey, it's ugly. Leo, I'm moving in. I, I don't think it's seen me yet. Oh, what a slob! I'm gonna take him. Freeze! Potato face! <laughs> he fires his particle thrower at Donald Trump. It dodges the shot and then stream tear tears away 50 feet of wallpaper in a searing ricochet. Then the vapor flies off the da- Whoop, whoop, ha, stop, boop, boop. Uh, Then Donald Trump flies off down the hall. Ray, something's in here. Guys, where are you, Pete? Third floor. Get down here. Sit tight. I'm on my way. I'm here, Ray. He's looking at me. Don't move. Oh, yeah? How do you know? How do you know that? I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> just guessing. Guessing you, punch you. <laughs> it's slimy. And see. Wait! Wait! It's Bill Cosby. <laughs> and he slimed me. No, man! And see. No, I pudding to him, man. I pudding to him. Guys, big round of applause for Sean Aston! This guy did a great job, didn't he? he? Did a great job. He did that little thing with the little hobbits, you know, the big feet. He did that. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I like to wear rings, man. That's cool. That's cool. All right. That's great. All right. Here we go. This is going to be a fun one. All right. Oh, as, this is going to be the fun yes, one? Yes, this, this is the, the fun, fun one. one. About as, damn time. <laughs> as Spangler, Mo, Calculon. As Stance, Nolan, Al Pacino. Uh, we're going to have, as Venkman, Jess, yeah. and as the hotel manager, Troy, you're going to sing your lines. So as the Venkman, Jess, Michael McDonald. Oh, good, good. And as the hotel manager, Troy, Aaron Neville. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 
And then narrated, DC, oh I, you have a surprise for us, so I'm going to let you just go with that. And oh. then on the next page, there are four broadcaster pieces. Okay. We're going to have a walk-off. Oh, are we? All right. You all love Peter, uh, Christopher Walken. Sure. So we're going to hear yes, four if, different versions. Yes, because if we all did versions. Peter Falk, it would be a Falk-off. <laughs> You're going to hear four guys do four impressions of walking. So first up is Nolan. Second up, so as, yeah, as Grimsby is Nolan. As Roy Brady is Mo. As Larry King is Troy. Sweet. And then Casey Kasem, Jess. You will all do your Peter Walken, your oh, Christopher Walken. Nice, nice. That'll Peter Walken. It's like the, the Walking walk Dead, dude. Whoa. All right. I present to you the walk-off. <laughs> oh, God. Well, first, first. First, we have other stuff to attend to. Some housekeeping. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> we got actual contact. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, it's here. It just went into the banquet room on the... Dramatic pause. <laughs> Third floor. This is so exciting. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm the narrator. So, Stance helps Venkman to his feet, and they rush off. <laughs> there! On the ceiling! Wait. Wait. There's something I forgot to tell you. What did you forget to tell me? <laughs> so good. Don't cross, dramatic pause, the streams. Why not, baby? <laughs> Trust me, it will be bad. What do you mean when you say it's bad? <laughs> it's hard to explain, but try to imagine <laughs> all life as you know it, stopping instantaneously and every molecule exploding with unholy acting talent! <laughs> that sounds like the orgasm I had last night. Okay, so, Venkman considers his own safety and decides to take charge. They blow up the ballroom and make an enormous mess. <laughs> when they emerge from the ballroom, the hotel manager approaches them. Well, we came and we saw it, we kicked its ass. Oh, 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 what happened? Did you see it? Oh, 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 <laughs> Will there be any more of them? Sir. <laughs> Sir. Number uh, one. What you had there was what we call... That's my line. Oh, are you Spangler? I'm Stance. <laughs> it's well, Stance's line Oh, my well, script. I'm sorry. I don't like when someone steps on my lines. Do the next one, Mama. Does it Spangler or Stance? Who's supposed to go, Jack? I asked you a question, boy. I'm not chewing on anything here. Okay. Sir, what you had there was what we refer to as a focused, non-terminal repeating phantasm, or class five, full Roman vapor. A real nasty one, too. Who's Spangler? You did this line, that's right. That'll be $4,000 for the entrapment. I'm also running a special on proton charges this week. Only, dramatic pause, $1,000 for proton recharge and storage. $1,000. I won't I no idea be, be so much. That's fine, we'll let it go. Hey, put it back. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I need to 
much, oh, thank you very much, baby. <laughs> oh, my God, it's my playlist. <laughs> So guess what? So Music good. interlude here with newspapers and clips catching ghosts. It's exciting. Oh, this, yes. Good morning. This is Roger Grimsby, right? Today, the entire eastern seaboard is alive with talk of hundreds of reported incidents involving multiple sightings and what can only be described as extreme events. A paranormal extra phenomenal Proportions. <laughs> it seems everybody's willing to bring the, the old ghosts, skeletons, out of the closet. Literally. <laughs> Roy Brady reports from New York. Take it, Roy. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> everybody's heard ghost stories around the campfire. Heck, my grandma used to spin yarns about a spectral locomotive that used to rocket past the farm where she grew up. Now, <laughs> as if some unseen authority had suddenly given permission, thousands of people here are talking about encounters they claim to have had with ghosts. Um, yeah, Troy just bailed on his line, so who wants to read the next I'll just, section? I'm gonna cut to the case. Go ahead, just cut the whole. Still making headlines all across the country, the Ghostbusters are at it again. This time at the fashionable dance club, The Rose. The boys in gray slugged it out with a pretty perky poltergeist, then stayed on to dance the night away with some of the lovely ladies who witnessed the disturbance. This is Casey Kasem, and I used to do the voice of Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. Let me show you Zoinks Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pal, let's get in the van and solve the mystery with a Scooby snack. This is Casey Kasem out. And scene. <laughs> Troy quit, man. He just quit. That Aaron Neville thing killed him. You guys really pissed him off. He's done. That's it. Hey, by the way, while he's gone, I just want to take a second. I think I speak for all of us. I've had a chance to meet so many of you guys, and I just want to say thank you so much for being so freaking awesome to us. We love you guys a lot, all right? Thank you very, very much. You made your home feel like our home. We appreciate it. We appreciate all of you, seriously speaking. All right. So let's go. Oh, he's back there peeing in the cup. Let's move on to the next okay. Scene. I didn't leave. I'm just peeing right here. Me too. Me too. Right now. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's right. why it's good to be Nolan North, all man. Right. Well, let's see. We, we got like tw 10 more minutes. We have two scenes and we can get through them. I think I'm oh. eating too much meat. Next up, uh, <laughs> as, as Janine Maurice Foghorn Leghorn. Nice. Go, Mo. As Stance uh, Nolan. How about Liam Neeson? Yeah. All right. As uh, Vankman, Jess, we need Cartman. Oh, good God. Oh, good God. Okay. All right, DC, <laughs> the narrator. You want to do Pardo as the narrator, and then as Winston, surprise us. Oh, God. So you're both, yeah. And as soon as Troy gets back, <clears throat> he is going to be Peck as the Joker. Oh, sweet. So we do need to... Oh, he's back. He's All back. right. Ladies and gentlemen, Troy Baker. You couldn't wait, you couldn't wait for one line. Yeah. So was, was my walk in that bad, Troy? Was that the deal? Was <laughs> a phone in topic today, ghosts and ghost busting. Yeah, it, it was that bad. That's Shit. excellent. All right. You I'm are, so sensitive. Uh, you are peck. As the Joker. Your peck is the Joker, bro. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, whenever you guys are ready, go. In the next scene, you're a joke as the pecker. So. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right, very good. Interior reception area, day. Janine is handling a steady barrage of phone calls, switching from one line to the other. Winston Zeddemore, a large, impressive-looking black man, I'm not going to do that, um, sits across from her, filling out a job application. Venkman and Stance approach. Their jumpsuits are covered with smoldering electo-slime. 
Uh, let me ask you something. The ad in the paper just said help wanted. What's the job? Well, I really, I say I really don't know, Mr. Zetterball. They just told me to take applications and ask you these, these questions. Do you believe in UFOs, astral projection, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spiritual photography, full trance mediums, telekinetic movement, black and all white magic, pyramidology, the theory of Atlantis, the Loch Ness, I say the Loch Ness monster, <laughs> or in general, spooks, specters, wraiths, geists, or ghosts? Not really. However, if there's a steady paycheck and a reach around in it, I'll believe in anything you say. Boy, I have a particular set of skills, and that was a rough one. <laughs> you and Liam Neeson. <laughs> Troy, if you leave this stage again, I will find you. <laughs> And I will kill you. <laughs> you guys, I can't take much more of this. The place is killing me, Kenny, and you don't look good either, Colin, not just because you're a Jew. Uh, Janine, here's the paper on the Brooklyn job. She paid with a Visa card, which is totally sweet and awesome, you guys. Here are tonight, I say, here are tonight's calls. Oh, no. Two more free roaming repeaters. And this is Winston Zedemore. He came about the job. My, you're a large, impressive-looking black man. <laughs> That's excellent. You're hired. I'm Ray Stance. Again, I have a particular set of skills. Because I have no other lines that people know me from like that. <laughs> this is Pete Venkman. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, someone from the EPA is here to see you. The EPA? What's he about? Well, I, I didn't ask, I say I didn't ask him. All I know is that I haven't had a break in two weeks and you promised me you'd hire more help. Janine, you are totally starting to piss me off right now. I'm sure a woman with your qualifications would have no trouble finding a top black job in the housekeeping or food service industry. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I have quit better jobs than this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, can I help you, ma'am? Hello. I'm Walter Peck. I represent the Environmental Protection Agency, Third District. <laughs> that sounds pretty sweet. How's it going, dude? Are you Peter Venkman? Yes, I'm Dr. Venkman, and I'm totally sweet, you guys. Exactly what are you a doctor of? Mr. Venkman. Well, I have PhDs in psychology and parapsychology, but not plastic surgery, which is a shame because your face, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a note to kill you first. <laughs> I see. And now you catch ghosts. Yeah, you could say that. Do you also catch bats? <laughs> And how many ghosts have you caught, Mr. Venkman? I'm not at liberty to say. Ooh, not at liberty at all. Well, let me ask you this. Where do you put these ghosts once you catch them? In Phoenix, Arizona, you guys. <laughs> this storage facility, would it be located on the premises? Yes. And may I see the storage facility? No. <laughs> and why not, Mr. Venkman? Because you didn't say the magic word. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of guy. <laughs> Is the magic word, I'll strangle you, then feed you your own intestines? <laughs> <laughs> or what is the magic word, Mr. Venkman? Please. <laughs> I love it when people say please. May I please see the storage facility? <laughs> Why do you want to see it? Well, because I'm curious. 
I want to know more about what you do here. Frankly, there have been a lot of wild stories in the media, and we want to assess any possible environmental impact from your operation. For instance, the storage of noxious, possibly hazardous waste materials in your basement. Now, either you show me what's down there, or I come back with a gun, and I put it into your mouth, <laughs> and I say, swallow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, you guys, get a court order. Then I'm gonna totally see your ass up for wrong and persecution and kick you in the nuts. Respect my authority! <laughs> was really hoping you would say no. <laughs> Have it your way, Mr. Vankman. <laughs> and scene. Do we have time for one more or are we done? You guys want to hear one more scene? Is that okay? Are we, are we okay? Do we have a green light for one more scene? Hello? Nobody's Anybody? Just one more scene. All right, here we go. Hey, and after this, we're going downstairs to sign. So if you haven't come to say hi to us yet, come it's to say hi to us. actually not downstairs. Oh, where is it? Across, across the, the walk bridge. The and make sure you get in line. They won't throw you out. Yeah, right. dude. So come see us. We like so you guys. So across the walk in the autograph area against the wall to the left. Oh, yeah. Dude, All up? right, we are going to do as Winston, Maurice, Mr. Freeze. Good. As Stance, Troy, Pagan Men. As Dana, Jess, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Three people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. As the narrator, Nolan, Recto Finn from COD Zombies. Spangler, DC. That was not the response I wanted. <laughs> How about bringing Wesker back for the final scene? All right. And as Venkman, Maurice, we have to hear Inspector Gadget. Oh, yeah. Last scene, folks. Enjoy and make sure you get over there so you get in line. All right, dude. Basement storage facility, Ghostbusters headquarters. Hmm. I'm worried, Ray. It's getting crowded in there, and all my recent data points to something big on the bottom. What do you mean, big? Well, let's say this Twinkie represents the normal amount of psychokinetic energy in the New York area. According to this morning's PKE sample, the current level in the city would be a Twinkie 35 feet long. Weighing approximately 600 pounds, ensuring complete global saturation. That's a big Twinkie. <laughs> we could be on the verge of a fourfold crossover something we like to do here quite often in Kirat. Or worse, if what we're seeing indicates a massive PKE surge, I love the sound of that, we could experience an actual rip. Egon, we just had a visit from the EPA. <laughs> How's the grid around the storage facility holding up? Unlike this crab rangoon, it's not good, Pete. <laughs> Tell him about the Twinkie. <laughs> what about the Twinkie? Dana, the four line is taken into a kitchen by the crazed terror dogs screaming <laughs> like the little crawlers <laughs> and the little monkeys, those infernal monkeys. Forget it, Louis, there is a party and has a terror dog attack him. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> chases him into Central Park. <laughs> I've had that happen, it's not good. Interior apartment hallway night. Vakeman rings Dana's bell. Ow! 
<laughs> no, wait, no, sorry. Venkman literally rings Dana's doorbell. He waits, he rings again, and again, and again, and he knocks, and then the door opens, and Dana's standing there, but she has changed radically, and her eyes, her eyes are red, like the zombies. <laughs> Does anyone have a gun? Hello there. That's a new look for you. I, I like it. Tell me, are you the key master? <laughs> Not that I know of. She slams the door closed like she should. Venkman knocks again and again and she answers. Tell me, little fellow, are you the key master? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm a friend of his, actually. He told me to meet him here. I uh, didn't get your name. I'm Zul. I used to be the governor. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> what are we doing today, Zul? We must prepare for the coming of Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Goza. Trump, eh? <laughs> they can it says this. They call him the destructor. <laughs> You're not kidding around, Gozer baby. Are we still going out? You know, we, you could pick up the place if you're expecting someone. Tell me, do you want this body? <laughs> Is this a trick question? <laughs> I guess the roses work. Oh, wow. Take me now, some creature. Take me to the gym. You know, we never talk anymore. Why I, would we look at me? I make it a rule <laughs> never to get involved with possessed people. Well, actually, it's more of a guideline than a rule. Say it. Say, Say it. it. I want you inside me. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of you girls have said that to me all weekend. Don't act like it's such a big surprise. All right, seriously. All right, you know what I'm saying. So oh, much Oh, no, I can't. It sounds like you've got at least two people in there already. <laughs> Might be a little crowded. And a lot of girls have said that to Jess this weekend as well. Now, why don't you just quit trying to upset and disturb <laughs> oh, Dr. Bankman and, and just relax. Lie down there. Now, relax. Put your... Put your hands on your chest, yes. Now, what I'd like to do is talk to Dana. I want to talk to Dana. Dana, Dana, it's Peter. There's no Dana. There's only Zul. Whoa. <laughs> Zuli, you nutball. Now, come on, come on. I want to talk to Dana. Dana, relax. Come on out, Dana. Come on, come on, talk. Can I talk to Dana? There's no Dana. Only Zul. Stop whining. Your mommy's not here to wipe your little tushy for you. Right. What a lovely singing voice you must have. Now, I'm going to count to three, Zuli, and if I don't get to hear Dana, there's going to be some real trouble in this apartment. Oh, I'm going to pull out the go, go, gadget, ex ghost exterminating <laughs> thingamabobber that hasn't been invented yet. One, two, two and a half. I am Zul. I am the Terminator. And scene. Guys, big round of applause. Phoenix, Arizona, we love you guys. Thank you so, so much. We'll see you over there, all right? Guys, head across the hall. They're all going to be there in about 10 minutes. Let's do this. I will walk over with you. No, we won't. <laughs> Jeremy, Trinity, Dan, oh, I love my singer girl. Oh, you don't know my name. I don't know my name. 